in fighting Ghanam say. Well, I'd love to thank the president for giving us another opportunity to serve Ghana on this committee. Um, you know, uh, as a, uh, last year, April, we could not process water. A Ghana Water Company, I mean, could not process water in a, a number of our processing plants. Uh, um, so it was a serious uh, matter. We were losing farmlands, losing forests. Um, the soil was being polluted in the air and so on. Uh, the fish, there was no fish, no life in a lot of the rivers. So the president had to take action. And uh, to do that, uh, we, we instituted a ban and then got to Pishin Vanguard to help us maintain that ban. In the meantime, we had to sit together, devise certain means uh, to monitor mining, small scale mining, uh, so that we are able to monitor things and they go, don't go back to their bad old ways. Uh, one, we did not talk about Ganamse or small scale or large scale. We define illegality. And so if we are Ganamse, if we are small scale, if we are large scale and you are doing illegal things, uh, that will not be accepted. And illegal activities included mining in the water bodies, that is dredging, uh, mining along the banks of the river, uh, foreigners engaged in mining, the use of dangerous chemicals like mercury and cyanide in mining, uh, diversion of effluent or tailings into rivers, uh, and, and, and then non-reclamation of mine out areas. And that was not being done. So these are the illegalities that we uh, defined and whether whoever that did that was doing something wrong. And so uh, apart from that, we had to strengthen the regulatory agencies. For example, Minas Commission is very important in, in, the, in the mining industry, uh, but its inspector division was more or less not non-functional. And so we had to revive that division, provide them with the logistics, the personnel, and so on. And that involved opening up new mining districts and sub uh, offices. Uh, as of now, we have about 72 offices across the country they are going to employ more people, more inspectors, and also vehicles for them to move around, to be mobile. So this is what is happening uh, at the Minas Commission. We are doing the same thing with uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Forestry Commission is also undergoing some reforms, as well as the Water Resources Commission. So the idea is to strengthen the regulatory agencies uh, so that they will be able to do their normal work. We know uh, that this work is not going to be on the short haul. It's going to be a long haul process, and we are preparing for that. And also, we needed to devise certain means to monitor the people well. As of now, uh, in the past, we sent soldiers and the, you know, chased our people, and, and that was the end. Uh, but we know that boots on the ground have limited value. We, they cannot be there all the time throughout the day, so we had to you know, deploy drones. Uh, some of them, most of them can work during the day. We now have drones that can work in the night with um, infrared sensors that will be able to take pictures, clear pictures during the night. And some of them also have um, long endurance drones that can fly for more than two hours and so on. So we are doing this to be able to monitor what is happening. And also there was the need to integrate the activities of the regulatory agencies. For example, if somebody applied for a license in the Minas Commission, EPA didn't know who applied and how the process and so on, the life cycle of the license application. So we devised an application, computer uh, software application we call Galamstop, that will integrate the activities of all these agencies, EPA, Minas Commission, uh, just assemblies, um, water resources, forestry, and so on, so that we'll know. For example, if somebody applies for a license at Minas Commission, uh, the, the software, the application will be able to tell us who applied, when, and throughout the life cycle, after one month or so, we'll know where the process has reached. And all the agencies will know. In this way, we'll also be able to detect any abnormalities that will happen along the line. Um, the miners are going to be tagged uh, that is the concessions. Uh, we are going to know their exact locations, the size of the concessions, 
who owns them, the machinery being used there, and everybody will be given an ID card with the barcode, and in that barcode will be all the information about the individuals, the owners, um, the type of concession, what they are doing, and so on. So when you scan, each of them will get an ID card. The same information will be posted on the notice board at the site so that you can go there and scan with uh, even a mobile phone and you'll get all the information that you need. So we are trying to uh, use technology to overcome our difficulties. Apart from the drones, we are also getting some companies to help us with satellite imagery, you know, so satellites in space that we're able to give us pictures of what is happening. And that will help us right. assess our forest cover and so on. So uh, that's what things we are doing now. Right, right. So um, you first of all told us about how you attempted to define what exactly an illegality was. Yes. You went into it, not small or large or medium. What is illegal is illegal. Yeah. And then how you had to build the capacity of state agencies yes. themselves in the sector. And then you talked about technology. You talked about it in two bits. You talked about drones. You talked about barcodes. You talked about satellite imagery in registration. And then you talked about how to integrate various state agencies involved in the sector so that they can work across board in five Fighting this. It seems like a very comprehensive explanation, but in the past year or so that you have been doing this, what have been the results? What have we seen in terms of number of people who have been sent out in terms of lands that are no more being used for Galamse? No, we are, you see, we have not deployed. Uh, we are in the process. That's a roadmap. Okay. You know, the roadmap to lifting of the ban, and after that, what we are to do so that uh, the bad things of old uh, don't recur. So what you are telling us is what you are planning, what we are to, planning do. to do. Okay, and what have we done so far? That was the question. What we've done so far is Vanguard going on the, on, on the ground and also uh, training small-scale miners. We have trained about 3,000 of them, actually about 3,200 of them, because the things that happened in the past could be attributed to uh, lack of knowledge or skills. But we have trained them, and we are saying that Going forward, every concession should have one or two people who were trained at uh, UMAT in Kabul. Right. So the training is very important. And then education uh, and the media coalition against illegal mining also helped us. Right. Apart from that, the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs has taught the nation twice, meeting chiefs, opinion leaders, and explaining to them. And we have also gone around to all the mining districts meeting with uh, the miners themselves, the district community council, the DCEs, trying to explain to them what we are doing. We've also done a documentary film, a documentary which will be shown uh, on TV that is being done by uh, the means of information uh, so that we know exactly what is happening on the ground, uh, the way forward, and what we expect right. all of us to do. So these mm -hmm. are the things uh, that, that we have on. done. That we've done, yes. Okay. So f with Operation Vanguard, for instance, in the operations they've been carrying out across the country, how many illegal miners, former illegal miners, have we been able to get out of the pits? Um, we've made about 1,400 arrests. 1,400 Yes, people. and uh, as I said, only 10% of them have been prosecuted. And this includes a lot of foreigners. Um, uh, foreigners. So, and then they've impounded about 700 excavators and uh, some other equipment, about 84 vehicles, uh, a few more other equipment. How much land, if you are speaking in terms of land mass, how much land mass do you believe is now in use in other ways and not uh, in, in use as Galam say, in illegal mining? I should that say. is uh, uh, degraded land. Yes. How much? No, I'm not saying how much degraded land has been reclaimed so far. I'm saying that lands that were being used in Galamse and are no longer being used in Galamse, are we able to quantify that? No, if we restrict ourselves to Galamse, then we'll be in trouble because Galamse, uh, these are people who will take pans and pickaxes and even go into cocoa farms, dig you know, a few um, square meters and then move to the other ground. So it will be, we have to walk across the, the length and breadth to determine the small pieces that if, if we aggregate everything, I, I will not be able to tell you now. But we, I will know that um, from 1900, when we had 8.6 million hectares of primary forest, primary forest, right, 
1950, it had dropped to about 5.4. 2011, we had one point, just 1 1.4 million hectares of primary forest left. 2018, I can imagine that we have less than a million hectares of primary forest. But that so, was for different reasons, wasn't it? Yes. Initially for uh, illegal uh, logging, but now increasingly the last 20 years because of mining, small scale mining. Okay. So the question I had was that are we able to point to an area where we can say this area used to have, used to be full of illegal miners. This area used to have a lot of illegal mining ongoing. Now there is none, there is no illegal mining ongoing. Oh, yes, yes, here. yes. Uh, and how much land where, is that? I cannot quantify the size of the land, but we know uh, that um, the percentage of miners displaced uh, will be about 85 to 90 percent. When you are, say displaced, what do you mean? Who are no longer doing illegal activities on, on land. Okay. But so the 1,400 number that you have, how, how does that factor into this 85 percent? Is it that because these 1,400 people have been arrested, that is the 85% no, or...? No, no, no. Okay. Those who voluntarily, I mean, who were compliant, uh, as I said, a lot of the small scale miners were very compliant. They obeyed the ban. But a few uh, were there, and the people you term Galam, say miners, uh, these are the people who were um, arrested. Right. You're still listening to the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. We have a surprise guest this morning, Professor Kwamna Frimpong Boating. He's a minister for uh, Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. He's also the chairman of the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining. He's given us an update on what has been achieved so far and taken us into the roadmap of what we have wished to achieve going forward. We'll take these few messages. When we come back, we'll be taking a few more comments on some of these issues from Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating, particularly um, how much we want to invest in this, for instance, and this talk about alternative livelihood plan and all of that, the MMIP and all of that. We will be taking answers to those questions. If you have any questions, send them in on 0244-340-437. That's our WhatsApp line. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. Special person? Do you need that app that works without internet? Worry no more. Moolah Lite is here. You can buy airtime to any network and pay bills using any mobile money wallet. What's more? Earn money by referring new users to buy airtime. Download the Moolah Lite app from Google Play Store today or simply dial star 234 hash to use Moolah Lite. Hey! New phone, new TV. <laughs> ah, why? New job, Anna. Same job. Man, forget to say every month of August inside we day. NTM Mumu. Ma check the flow second stone. Hey, you talk true. Exciting things are happening with MTN Mumu. It costs to our pump you MTN Mumu wallet. No. Fire payments. Send money. Shut our bills. You know. Just do more on your MTN Mumu. For building more points. Now win the more. iPhone 10. Samsung S9 Plus. Samsung TV sets. And they up to 2,000 CDs. This e cash over to free every man and you tell your baby 80 daily star 120 hash for check your points promo where you're locking it down till 31st October 2018. FAT, oh, we near, oh, yeah, promo code via, oh, yeah, she, I said, what your price, oh, we near, number back, compare and a befro 0244 300 000. Now, I bet your price our MTN office, MTN and for text message and chat here. 80 koswa, just momo it everywhere you go. MTN momo, I is a good at your. Same great bank helping you grow. Do you have challenges transferring money to your friends or customers with accounts at other banks? Are you worried at the delays with other banks' checks you deposit into your account? Do you have challenges paying your workers or suppliers instantly across banks? You don't need to wait for two days anymore. Walk into any ADB branch today and send your money instantly to any account in Ghana or link ADB Instant Pay to your accounting software for all salaries and payments. You can also access ADB Instant Pay service on our mobile banking app, internet banking, and star 767 hush. ADB, truly a Greek and more. Hey, 
Kwame, hmm. what's up here? My brother, my wife has been diagnosed with cancer. What? Uh, my brother is here with kidney disease too. Oh, yeah. Do you know the World Health Organization estimates that over 16,000 new cases of cancers are diagnosed annually in Ghana and kidney diseases account for 10% of all medical admissions to Kolibu? But thanks to Glycocritical Illness Plan, Joseph, I have spent over 20,000 Ghana cities on my younger brother's disease. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is Joseph? Glycocritical Illness Plan, GSIP, provides you with financial support when diagnosed with any critical illness or dread disease such as cancers, strokes, kidney failures. Speak to Glycolife today on 0302-218-500 for your GSIP policy. It is definitely in our interest to survive. Glycolife, we cushion you for life. At Afrodan, we believe that many of the problems people have with their health is as a result of the way they sit. In other words, your chair can kill you. Here's Dr. Marcus Mann of the Chiropractic and Wellness Center. What you have to remember is that the spine is the lifeline to your body. And posture is the window to that spine. Now, posture is affected by your daily activities and habits like sitting. That's why at the Chiropractic and Wellness Centers, we recommend what I believe to be the best chairs available for preventing not only subluxations, but also other health problems that you may not be aware of, and that's Rabami and Mobilex chairs. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, I have to correct the effects of this poor sitting habit in our businessmen and businesswomen. Always remember, optimal spine equals optimum health. So, for the sake of your health, buy Rabami or Mobilex chairs from Afrodan. We are on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Telephone 663-085. My dear, hmm, getting a new asset will make me feel on top of the world. Oh. Hmm, look, I'm thinking of getting a new car, a house, an acre of land, and a new trap for the business. No doubts, my darling. But why not first check to ensure the security of these assets before you buy? Ah, you are right. With some people using their assets to take loans from different banks, while others sell properties which do not belong to them, to innocent buyers, you and I have no choice but to quickly fall on the collateral registry to know the true status of any property we want to buy or accept as collateral for loan. You better act now. Don't lose guard. The collateral registry of the Bank of Ghana is the one-stop place for banks and individuals to check the true state of an asset. Contact the Bank of Ghana's collateral registry at the City House 11th floor or call 0243 543-931. Collateral Registry. Securing your transaction. This message was brought to you by the World Bank Group and IFC in partnership with the Bank of Ghana and with support from the State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO. Eight minutes to the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. I am Daniel Dazi here with our guest, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating. He is the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. He is also Chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Galamse. And we've been talking about the fight against Galamse so far. It's not just about Operation Vanguard. It's also about training of small-scale miners, education of the public. We've learned, for instance, that 1,400 small-scale miners have been arrested, 140 prosecuted. Hmm, why that difference? We'll come to that answer. And we'll also be looking at how much we've spent, the roadmap for fighting Galamse going forward. And we are hearing hints that the ban on small-scale mining will be lifted soon. We will be also getting to that answer shortly. But there's nothing more painful than running out of data when you need it the most. That's why Airtel Tigo is giving you big time data bundles. With Airtel Tigo's big time data bundles, you get more data from one city, two cities, five Ghana cities, and than anywhere else. And you also get a whole 1.5 gig for only 10 Ghana cities. Even better, it's a big 2 gig for the same 10 Ghana cities when you bundle directly from an Airtel Tigo scratch card or from your Airtel Tigo money account. The best part is you don't have to rush to use it all before it expires because Airtel Tigo's big time data bundles have no daily, weekly or monthly limit. You can browse uh, how you want when you want to. Get the big time data bundles today by dialing star 111 hash and choose a bundle that works for you. T's and C's apply. This offer is for both existing a new Airtel Tigo subscribers so join Airtel Tigo today 
Now, open an ADB account today, send your name and account number to your relations abroad and ask them to use MoneyGram Direct to account service and receive your money in your account in minutes when they are sending you money. With the MoneyGram Direct to account service, there is no PIN code Wahala. You can access your money on all ATMs in Ghana or send it to any mobile money wallet using ADB mobile banking app for star 767 or star 767 hash. Visit our Facebook website or call our hotline 0302-210-210 for more. ADB, truly a Greek and more. Are you planning your home or office renovation? Kimo Home, your trusted supplier of complete bathroom, showers, tap mixers and accessories, has in stock all you need to make your home and office look and feel great. With as little as 38 Ghana CDs, you can buy yourself a bathroom accessory and with 585 Ghana CDs, you can get a WC from world-class brands like Ideal Standard. All these have fantastic modern features and warranties. So rush now to their showrooms at South Industrial Area, close to STC or Mechanical Lloyd or the Spintex Road opposite Energy Bank or chat with them on 0244-030411. That's a WhatsApp number, 0244-030411. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Kimo Home for great deals. Kimo Home, better life through better quality. So let's get straight back to my guest in studio, uh, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating. Prof, moving on, um, the Association of Small Scale Miners says the plan to assemble all excavators at a selected point is not progressive. They say it's a needless, expensive measure. Can we devise a better way of tracking the equipment? If they have a better alternative, uh, that will get the work done quickly. Uh, we'll consider it. So at the moment, you believe this is the best that can be done? Well, that's, that's what we think. But if we have a better alternative, we can look at that. And that will not prolong uh, the period until we leave the ban. You know, if they want us to you know, spend weeks and months to do something else, we will listen to them. Okay. Um, but what is this? your response to this complaint that the figure, 1,400 arrested, 140 prosecuted, that gap is too wide? Well, that is uh, the way it is in a democracy. If you take somebody to um, the police station or to court, it goes through a process, and it's not as fast as we want it. But we hope that someday uh, it will be faster. Mm. Mm. How, how has your engagement been with the Attorney General and the ju- Judiciary to try and expedite the process? We have not sent a formal petition to them, uh, but just people comment on them. But at the appropriate time, we will wish that uh, there will be a special court for such cases. Right. Since that is your wish, would you would it not be prudent to forward that uh, request? We to will them? do that, uh, but we have present problems. You know, uh, how to get these people back to work, going through the roadmap, and you know, that that is important to us. Mm, mm. Not so much the arrest of minors. Okay, so your your focus is rather on rehabilitating the system rather than arresting illegal miners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk about cost. Operation Vanguard. How much does it cost us every month? Uh, a quarter, close to fifteen million CDs. Fifteen million CDs. Yeah. That's about five million a month. Yes. Every quarter. We are keeping four hundred um, men. You know, their uniforms, their feeding, their accommodation, medical care, transportation, even for alone. Mm. This is a lot of money that is being spent. And it's, I think it's money well spent. Mm. Mm. So that means we, are getting, we should be getting close to 60 million since we started. Yes, yes. Wow. Um, so with this roadmap that we are looking at, mm. how much will that cost us? Would it be less expensive over a similar period? We, we think so. I mean, um, because we have to... Uh, look at things and examine situations before we spend the money. Um, for example, we want to know um, the sizes and locations of concessions. You, you could do that with traditional surveying and so on. And that is something that can cost close to over 10 million cities uh, across the nation, maybe 13 million cities. But when you devise, uh, de- de- deploy technology, uh, that is uh, equipment, um, that to allow you to do the GIS and the allocations, then you'll be spending less than 10% of this sum. Also, uh, when you wanted to buy the drones, uh, we have to watch the procurement process very well 
and uh, know exactly what you want to buy. Uh, we had a case where uh, somebody offered the drones to us for close to $8 million. Um, but then we sent people from here to outside, examine the things, and we could get the same quantity and similar quality for less than $1.5 million. Wow. So we saved a lot of money. So we take measures to save money because we don't have the money. And we need money for our schools. We need money for all the other interventions. And so um, that's, that's what we are doing now. We spend a lot of time mm. to go through the things that we want to buy so we get the right things at the right prices. Yes. But has it gone through um, competitive tendering, for instance? Yes, we do that. Right. Um, talk to us. So what is, the, what is the round figure for the roadmap in implementing the roadmap? How much is it? We cannot uh, give you the uh, the accurate, very accurate figure because you see, we are talking about the tracking of um, buying the tracking devices, even assembling the excavators and doing many other things. Um, uh, we have formed teams, three teams, that will do the vetting, and they will have to do some office work and then travel across the country to uh, the various mining centers. A team will go, will take uh, Western Region. There are seven members. Uh, some persons in the, from the university, another team will take Ashanti region, and the third team will take uh, Central and Eastern together. So we are now working the figures. Uh, so maybe in about two, three weeks' time, we know exactly how much you're going to spend going forward. But do we have a rough idea since we know that, um, as you said earlier, it will be less than 60 million, so over at least a year. So do we have that uh, 50, 40, 30 million? What, what would that you be? mean for, for the... Uh, for a, a period similar to what we've seen? No, no. I or mean, per, maybe be, per it quarter? Less. I mean, if for the roadmap, no. We think it will be much less than So that. per quarter? Uh, probably 2 million or so. It, that will be, yeah. Cities or dollars? Oh, cities. Cities. Yes. Two million Ghana cities per yes, quarter. I think oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, I just got this message from a listener. He says, good morning. Kindly ask Prof what is being done about the financiers of Galamse because only the small-scale guys, only the small guys are being prosecuted. We want to hear that actions are being taken against the financiers. Exactly. That is what we want to take measures to uh, prevent. And that is the exercise, the essence of knowing the owners of the concessions. Because if you go to the field, the people you arrest are not the owners. Uh, they are in the big cities, they don't do, most of them don't do the manual work. So we want to know where the concessions are, their sizes, the owners, the equipment that they use, and the people who are trained, uh, whether they have trained science, um, geologists or so. We want to know all these things through the gallon stop and through the vetting exercise. And this is what some people are trying to kick against. They don't want us to go through that process. Uh, but we have to do it so that we have accurate information about the owners and the things that you are talking about. And these people, are they people within government, outside government? Where they are Ghanaians, you know, across board. We, I, I, will not, I don't know them. I don't know all of them. You know, I don't know them. So we want to know them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you, when you say that people are kicking against this, that's, that's my, my, my curiosity. What, what is being done? No, but for example, some of the miners will tell you, oh, we want to go and work now. You know, there's no, we, we don't want to go through this vetting exercise. It's taking too long. We want to go to the field. We have lenses and so on. But if you have a lenses, we need to see the lenses, the type of lenses that you have. So we have data, accurate data on, on this, uh, in this industry. Right, you're still listening to the Super Morning Show. Prof. Kramna Frimpon Bating is my guest. We are taking the Joy Business Minute. We'll be back uh, to deal with more. It's the Joy Business Minute with Daryl and Karen. Making news this morning. Dr. Park with Indum is making a passionate appeal to the government to support local banks. The business mogul's appeal follows panic withdrawals that have hit most local banks. Registered mobile money accounts across three major telcos for the first time are stripped the country's total population. The latest data from the central bank's payment system show that the registered number of mobile money accounts increased from 21.36 million in June 2017 to 29.99 million in June 2018. 
Two Ghanaian firms have been awarded the contracts for the construction of the main infrastructure for the Marine Drive project expected to cost $2.8 million. The project seeks to harness the arts, create a cultural village and boost tourism in the country. And hundreds of Google employees have written to the company to protest against plans to launch a sensor search engine in China. They said the project raised urgent moral and ethical questions. Those are our top stories. We'll bring you updates at 3.06. The Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic Development, BIRDD, and the entire Buzia family invites you to the 40th anniversary lecture celebrating the legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Tuesday, the 28th of August, 3 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center. Come as we celebrate the life and values of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Special guest of honor, His Excellency the President, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. The Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic development BIRDD projects and protects the vision works and legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia which primarily had to do with rural development democracy and education we entreat all who believe in the vision and values of Dr. Buzia to participate in the 40th anniversary lecture remember it's Tuesday the 28th of August 3 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center all are welcome <laughs> What are you looking for? Now one got it all. Great discount, no door. Yeah, my feet are so. Best bargains on our days. Everything here is a bargain. High quality would be a priority. So tell your mom, tell Poppy. Tell you, actually, everybody. Welcome to Anchmans University College of Health Sciences, the newest health university college here in Ghana, poised to add in value to the pharmaceutical industry in the country. Entrans was set up to meet the high demand for research and in-depth knowledge for pharmacy. We are accredited by the National Accreditation Board, affiliated with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Students have the unique opportunity to enhance on training with the Entrance University Hospital and the Entrance Pharmaceutical and Research Center. School start in September 2018. Call us on 050-908-6631 or 050-908-6651. Enroll now. You can locate us at Opoigono of the Spintash Road, Accra. Entrance University College of Health Sciences, your preferred choice for pharmaceutical and allied health training. <laughs> <laughs> if you swipe your first National Bank Gold or Platinum Visa debit card as much as Quissy does, you earn so much free money, you two will be laughing all the way to the bank. Earn free money every time you swipe your first National Bank Gold or Platinum Visa debit card. Money does grow on our tree. This is not a promotion. It's a First National Bank thing. Terms, conditions and rules apply. First National Bank. How can we help you? Your office design, no. Yes, so I be I tell you say for proper and modern ceiling solutions, the answer be Interface Limited. Them get in stock acoustic ceilings. We go fit make your office fine like my own. Or even better pass your own self. We can better pass my own. Shall I are they go Interface right now? Interface Limited is the leading supplier and installer of finishing input materials for the building and construction industry in Ghana. Call us on 0274-999999 or visit our website at www.interfacelimited. Time waits for no man. The future belongs to the brave. Nothing comes without a fight. Fight for a better future. Fight to change the world. Make your mark at Academic City College with its new campus in Hachiro Accra. With activity-based learning and premium teaching talent, take your education beyond the theoretical classroom. Visit www.acccghana.com. Admissions open now for September 2018. Academic City, unlocking potential, one leader at a time. 
It's your day off and you end up looking after the baby while your wife goes off to work. You realize you have no idea how to change a diaper. So you video call your wife. Hello, darling. Yeah, hello. Hello. Kojo, is everything all right? Everything is not all right. I'm not seeing Topo. How do I change a baby's diaper, please? Oh, Kojo. Kojo. Okay, first, put the diaper. The video call freezes. <laughs> While you wait for the internet to catch up, the baby sprouts a fountain and wets the diaper. As you are getting a new one, your wife comes back online. Kojo, no! But I have to go and get a new diaper. What must I do next? I beg, quick, 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 quick. Open quick. the front of the diaper. It's the side that has... Wow, look, eh? the video freezes again. Abba. By now, you know where the conversation is going. There's no buffering in real life. So why accept it from your internet connection? Get connected and experience ultra-fast internet to your home, powered by MTN Fiber Broadband. From the Internet Masters. MTN, everywhere you go. Still listening to the Super Morning Show, enjoy 99.7 FM. Our surprise guest this morning, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boating, Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, also Chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Galamse. We'll be wrapping up with Prof soon, and he's in all black. You'll be telling us why he's in all black. And then uh, he would take leave of us. But text messages are brought to you by Afro Daniel. Back must last you a lifetime. And Glyco Travel Insurance Policy, we cushion you for life. Afro Dan is offering you today the most comfortable chair in the world. The Nightingale Extreme Comfort Chair. It has over 10 thoughtfully engineered features, especially customized for your health and comfort. Go to Afro Dan on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade and feel this chair. You will be amazed. Um, now, travels abroad can be very exciting but full of uncertainties. But if you get the Glyco Travel Insurance Policy, which is designed to cover travel costs and reduce the risk associated with unexpected events during your international and domestic travels to Europe, the Schengen countries, or anywhere worldwide, you are covered. Talk to us today on 055-530-5547 or 020-887-6956. Let us help you plan for a peaceful travel abroad. Glyco Travel Insurance, cut the hustle, all the convenience. Glyco Life, we cushion you for life. Let me come back to Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boateng. Uh, Prof, the MMIP, when it was launched, had an alternative livelihood um, module that was embedded in it. What's how far with the implementation of that? Um, the MMIP. I'm not talking about that. I mean, we have yes, there's alternative livelihood, and it, that is being implemented by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. And um, Hajia um, Alima Mahama um, gave details about the program yesterday at the press conference. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Uh, but just as a way of refreshing for those who may not have heard. Um, yes, um, a lot of people, about 5,000 people applied, and they were vetted, and they started the training, I think, on the 5th of July. Uh, so it's something that has started. Okay, what uh, are some of the jobs that we're doing? Um, where their interests are. Some of them may want to do carpentry, masonry, uh, welding, um, the ladies, batik, uh, the rearing of animals and small creatures, and and so on. The, the usual okay. things, yes. Soap making. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me take a few more text messages. Um, good morning, Joy FM. Please ask the minister what came out of allegations against Sir John's connivance with the Chinese to do illegal mining during the reclamation exercise by Francis in Akuse. Well, as you said, these are uh, allegations. Uh, we heard about that, and the, what. Um, Sir John said was that he gave um, permission for people to do reclamation in some of the forest reserves, but later on his monitoring activities detected that they were not doing the reclamation as they were supposed to do, but mining, and therefore he withdrew the licenses of these people, and this uh, what we know happened. Okay, so. This is the explanation that has been given. Is it going to be investigated, looking at the fact that this allegation came from Parliament, from members of Parliament? Yes, uh, but this is what we have on the ground. Uh, I mean, we saw letters written by Sir John giving permission to, for people to do reclamation. But later on, his own monitoring teams detected that the people were not doing 
the reclamation, but they were mining. And therefore, he wrote to them to withdraw the permit that he gave to them. So beyond the withdrawal, will any action be taken against them? I mean, it's illegal, isn't it? It is. But if, the, what is important is that they stop. And then we, we see the way forward. It doesn't happen again. That's great. But then these people are booking the law. Are we referring to the attorney general? Are we calling the police into it? I think, well, for now, uh, as I told you initially, we really want to carry on with our roadmap, let people go to work, and then we increase our monitoring. You see, the thing is the rate of prosecution. We, if we want to you know, pursue this to the letter, um, then all miners will have to go to uh, prison, you know, as, as it were. But, but these are in a special case, aren't they? And we are, we are trying to find financiers. These are organized companies that got a contract with the Forestry Commission and have flouted the contract and are breaking the law rather. Wouldn't this take you to the heart of these big men behind these companies? Well, I don't know how big they are, but I, I'm sure that the Forestry Commission will take action. Um, Sir John will have to take action against the people who flouted the law. Right. So you have instructed him to do that? No, I can't instruct him. I mean, he'll be... If there's anything, He's working on be, his own. No, yeah. it will be done. No. His ministry, the Ministry for Lands and Natural Resources, he works under the ministry. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm not there to serve the powers of the ministries that are supposed to monitor these things. Sir John works under the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, and any action that So you left it for, for his sector yes, minister? the sector minister will determine that. Right. Um, hello, follow-up question. As an alternative, I'm sure that with the chassis number and VIN of the excavator seized, the owners can be traced through the customs database because these machines came through the port or were bought from the local machines. This can lead to some of the financiers. I think that's more of a suggestion than a question, or you want to respond to that? No, um, but we don't know. We, we, we don't know the uh, chassis number. Well, when you the, get the excavators, you don't have the chassis numbers on them? Well, we get them. Yeah, I mean, but he's we talking about... Them. We have to yeah. see them, or they have to give the information to us. But it should be accurate. Okay. But you've seized a number of excavators. You gave me that number earlier. That's about 700. But we yes. have close to more than 5,000 excavators in, in the field. But for the 700 we have seized, we can look at the chassis yes. numbers. Yes, we can. Yes, we can look at those numbers. That is right. I mean, it's yeah. a good suggestion. And apart from that, you have to be receive the electronic tracking devices. Okay. Okay. Um, why does environmental health officers that are state investigators and prosecutors get eliminated in public health matters? Environmental health officers that are state investigators and prosecutors get eliminated in public health matters. I don't, for I don't, I don't understand that. Okay, what are you to say? Okay, so environmental health officers are under your ministry, right? No. Oh, no, no, they are under local government yes. and at, yes, yes. at the, your assemblies. Okay, mm. so it's Selom, it, your, your question may be for the Minister for Local Government. Yeah, but I don't even understand the question myself. You know, what exactly If they are state you... investigators and prosecutors, uh, prosecutors. Mm. Selom, you may, you may want to come again with the, with the text. I think so. With the text message. Uh, before you go, Prof, because we know uh, you are a very busy man, we actually just told you for a few minutes. Before you go, Prof, um, plastics this year... World Earth Day was celebrated under the theme dealing with the plastics problem. The a ban on plastics has been called for by various sections of society. Is Ghana going to consider this? Yes, we'll consider that. Um, but we will also go through the whole management cycle that we have to reduce the use of cy uh, plastic, we have to recycle, and, and so on. Uh, but if, to do it properly, we need a policy and implementation plan. And so far, we have not had any plastic management policy. That's what we are doing now. Uh, right now, there's a team from my ministry uh, in, uh, working on this in Kufodia, in the hotel in Kufodia. And so at the end of the day, we'll get a solid policy. We have the zero draft already, uh, a policy and an implementation plan that will guide all of us. When we agree, uh, it's gone through the stakeholder consultation, then we'll know exactly what to do. Uh, there will have to... Uh, there has to be a ban on some plastic. But how we're going to do it uh, is something that um, our plan will determine. I so there will be a ban? We'll have to start something. I can imagine a situation where uh, maybe we'll, we'll start with carrier bags and, and other things, uh, and straw. If you want to drink, we are, uh, drink something, use the original uh, equipment and not a straw. Uh, or let's say chewing gum, you know, plastic cutlery and things like that. We'll start with those things. And when the water situation improves, 
and we get alternative for the um, containers for fluid, maybe like sachet water, bottle or water, oil or palm oil, cooking oil in, in the market, and so on. And then we educate ourselves also. When we're case, if we're going to buy watch or anything, you go with your plate and, and buy it. And so w w there must be a lot of education. We should be ready to effect a change. And then we don't want a situation where we, you buy things and people will flout uh, the regulations and you can't prosecute. Uh, we don't want that. So we, when will we get? When will we see this policy finished? You said they're in Koforidia. Yeah, when will well, we see it finished and launched? Well, we, then? we hope that by the end of September, we should have uh, everything should be ready. Okay, and we'll be ready to implement immediately? It, it has to go through uh, some consultation. We've started that already, but certainly, uh, probably we can start implementation before the end of the year. Right, thank you so much, Professor Akwabna Fimpombating. Thank you for having me. Right, he's the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, and he's also chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Galamse. Prof is in all black because he's going for the funeral of Mr. J.H. Mensah, the late Mr. J.H. Mensah.